the luminiferous ether uh, was born many, many, many years ago, well before the luminiferous ether was uh, created for explaining the wave theory of light, the, the motion of the light between the planets, the, the, the sun, the stars, until the Earth. The ether uh, began to be present in the uh, thought of, of human beings since the beginning the, the, of the uh, human thought in the Greece philosophy. Aristotle thought that the ether was the fifth element. After the earth, the hair, water, and fire, there was the ether, the fifth element, the perfect element that supported the motion of the uh, planets and of the star. This heater continued to be present in the minds of uh, scientists, philosophers, natural philosophers, until the beginning of the 20th century, changing its, uh, its, uh, its meaning a lot of times. And Newton also that didn't want to use the heater for explaining the, uh, in his laws, he created uh, the um, gravitation laws, but he wrote in, a le in letters that, yeah, do you? <laughs> he wrote in letters that the heater was the element that permitted the gravitation to be active. So the, f the force between the particles of ether permitted the planets, the big planets, to be attracted between each other. So this ether changed its mm, uh, meaning so many times that it continued to be present at the beginning of the, of the 19th century when the corpuscular theory of light uh, couldn't explain a lot of um, physical phenomena like uh, uh, interference and diffraction. And so uh, Thomas Young and Augustine Fresnel proposed that the light was not a corpuscular phenomena, but a wave phenomena. So in analogy with uh, a sound that is um, a wave phenomena, a um, movement, a vibrational movement of air, the heater was a vibrational movement of the heater. The only problem was that the, uh, <laughs> the the sound has a velocity that is 300 meters a second, but the, uh, heat, uh, the light was much more faster. The other problem was that the longitudinal vibratory motion of the sound could not explain some phenomena, so the vibration of the ether was thought to be perpendicular, perpendicular to the direction of motion. So to have this kind of motion, the heater should be very, very elastic, like a very s elastic solid. And the physicists begin to, began to be very, very curious to understand how it worked. They didn't find the solution. solution. And at the end of the 19th century, they were trying, they proposed 20 different theories of the heater even though they were not able to find one that was satisfying for everybody that accepted by the scientific community of the period, one of the most important sets of the period, the Lord Kelvin, said that one thing we are sure of, and it is that existent a substantiality of the luminiferous ether. So the ether was very present in 1885. 20 years after, the ether was disappeared by the scientific community think. Nobody wrote, more, uh, wrote another time on scientific publication of the ether. Only someone from philosophical reason tried to propose the ether to explain some general relativity space-time interaction and quantum phenomena. So the ether was completely away uh, of the mind of physicists after Einstein created the special relativity theory and proposed the quantum um, of energy for explaining some uh, phenomena of light. The uh, explanation of light became much more complex, that is now the quantum mechanics uh, theory. And the special relativity theory did not require anymore that there is a space 
that uh, an element that pervades everything, that is everywhere, omnipervasive, and that mm, it uh, transmits the uh, light in all the parts of the universe and uh, is inside of the human um, bodies, inside the planets, is in the um, interstition of all the molecules of all the solid bodies. This kind of ether disappeared. What if it uh, was uh, uh, continued to believe true? So, if I understand ether correctly, it is this force that surrounds us, it binds us, uh, brings us all together, <laughs> something, right? Yeah, it's, uh, uh, yeah. For the luminiferous ether was, uh, okay, you're thinking about the force. So if there... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, we did it. <laughs> okay, may the ether be with you, yeah. So uh, there could be two factions of people that are uh, for the force and against. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, maybe we could say a good half and perhaps an evil half, but somehow united as one totality of this force. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, we, c we can call it ether today, only for yeah. today, clearly. <laughs> we'll, we'll call it the ether. Yeah, okay. ether. <laughs> So, but the ether, uh, so after 1885, that it was, yeah, everyone yeah. agreed ether existed. And yeah. then 20 years later, it didn't. So science killed ether is. Yeah, Einstein maybe killed him. Uh, Einstein. It was so, a very high. So Einstein killed the ether. Killed the ether, yes, in 1905. So are you saying that he is part of the evil half of the force? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to that say that. Because that just blew George Lucas's mind right now. That blew my mind. I've got to go write home my fan fiction. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't want to say uh, that, but yes, Einstein wrote two, two papers, and he was the first to uh, wrote clearly, to write clearly, that the ether was not necessary for explaining phenomena. So he killed the ether in scientific publication. But uh, the most interesting thing that I think that uh, if the ether were true, uh, was that in a, just in the 1880s, the people, the scientists, the physicists began to um, began to associate the ether, luminiferous ether, with the ether that permits the transmission of thought between people. And also, like Wallace, after Wallace, some physicists began to do science, spiritist scientists with the conviction that if the ether was true, the unseen ether, the invisible ether explained that uh, the light, the invisible ether could also explain, could also explain the transmission of thought, the transmission of thought between uh, that, that of the body, clearly, that, that of the mm, living, uh, sur surviving uh, souls with the living human beings. So they began to, in the 1882, uh, they created a lot of scientists, com including Marie Curie, were in the uh, Society for Psychical Research in London in 1882. They began to uh, try to give um, um, a, physical, uh, a physical explanation of the psychic phenomena. So the heater permitted to <laughs> the sanctification of uh, uh, spiritualism and uh, telepathy. Maybe like force, yeah. <laughs> so what you're saying is that Mary Curie was alleged to be psychic powers, that she might have been one of the preliminary <laughs> Jedi, <laughs> and that's why she was so good. A, a lot of people in the society was skeptical, but one physics, very important uh, physicist, Sarah Oliver Lodge, a knight in the uh, British community of physicists, a great uh, uh, theory, uh, experimental, experimentalist of electromagnetism, he truly believed that uh, the um, telepathy was a physical phenomena. So he uh, made a lot of experiment and he also wrote a book, very, very big, about his communication between him and his lost sound during the world. 
the death son. So he, uh, the death son during the war, because he believed that he was able to speak with the not more living, uh, body living man, and he continued to alternate research in electromagnetism with research in psychical phenomena, writing a lot, writing a lot of book in which he said that he had the proofs, physical proofs, that uh, ether was true and explained the uh, telecinesia and everything that we know as psychical phenomena. So if the ether w <laughs> were true, um, clearly the world uh, would be very different. Maybe we uh, we'd be able to speak without the sound of the voice. We would all be able to say <laughs> In a perfect immobile position, <laughs> and to speak uh, for uh, did you, one did hour. Did you get that? I did. All right. <laughs> Are you doing that? <laughs> okay, now we try. <laughs> so, the, so the sense is that ether is is as opposed to the way we view uh, sort of quantum mechanics now. Ether is a more spiritual. It tries to instead of being just sort of modeling our reality, it it creates a sense of purpose for reality. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, there was a, a, um, clearly a great change in uh, epistemological views in scientific mind and physicist mind at the end of the 19th century. And uh, yeah, I think that uh, a lot of people that continue to believe in the heater is trying to give something that uh, uh, a more spiritual view of the of the physics too. A lot of scientists continue to think about the ether, even though they maybe uh, don't use these uh, these words, but they are trying to give a kind of unity in the force. But uh, so to be true, cosmology is not very different to quantum mechanics. Yeah. Uh, the standard model of particle physics, maybe it's not so different from the idea of uh, something that uh, unify everything. So you're saying that they were seeing that the, the soul becomes yeah. part of the ether. Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Like, In a as a way of like reconciling that it's something that is less a physical element that you know you can touch, taste, see, smell, feel. Uh, that this is something that is maybe on the other side. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we are not able to see, feel mm. it in a particular way. But mm. the spiritist, mm, spiritualist thought that it was possible in uh, some kind of particular uh, status of mind, like in sciences or uh, with the medium, mm -hmm. with some people that w w was able to interact with the medium, was possible to... So something like the sixth sense would not be a thriller, it would instead be a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, in the, indeed, a lot of spiritualists th thought about this, the, um, how to understand where is the place of the sixth sense and to interact with the fifth element. To so also another excellent movie. Um. <laughs> <laughs> We yeah, have uh, three movies. There is also <laughs> Fifth Element. Yeah. So, the, so the idea is that uh, the problem that Ether was sort of went against uh, when they s decided that they didn't believe in Ether, they had 20 theories of Ether, and it just got too complicated. Is that what, <laughs> is that what happened? Oh, uh, no, uh, what happens was that there was not physical... Mm, the most common uh, theory of uh, the heater was that the heater was stationary. So the velocity of light was C, was 300 kilometers per second, only in the heater reference frame. So in theory, it was possible to see a change in the velocity of light depending on the direction of the Earth, for example. But no nobody was able to find no change in the velocity of light for the direction. This was an empirical find. So there was no empirical finding that was related to the existence of the ether. So in a change of uh, epistemological uh, beliefs of the scientists at the, at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, the ether was not more necessary to explain phenomena. But was necessary maybe in a uh, private philosophical view of the world, I think. <laughs>